What's up everyone, this is Dr. Webb here. In this video today, you're gonna follow me as I go give a talk to a group of pre-med students who are part of a summer program here in San Antonio, Texas. It's called the Joint Emissions Medical Program. And what this program does is it pr prepares pre-medical students, students who are interested in going to med school, either D M MD or DO, prepares them for medical school. So there are some requirements, some criteria, and you have to apply for it. It's specifically for Texas students. It's associated with all of the medical schools here in Texas. Um, this is my third year coming to speak to the students. I'm also doing a book signing today. I just got out of surgery. I'm about to actually head over to the med school now. Um, but I think, if I remember correctly, you need about 27 credit hours, so you have to be pretty much done with your first year of college. You have to have certain grades, you can't have lower than a C, and you have to meet other certain criteria. If you guys wanna learn more about this program called the Joint Admissions Medical Program, it assists you, mentors you, you do an internship during the summers, uh, you have you go to classes, you're, you go to part, part of the, uh, the medical school curriculum. I believe you sit in on some medical school classes as well to just get your feet wet, uh, kind of learn the, uh, the language, uh, learn the application process to assist you in the MCAT preparatory as well. So, and then I'm the guest speaker. You guys are gonna follow me along today as I go speak to these students. Uh, hope you uh, enjoy my talk and um, I'll put the link in the description for this program. So if you're in Texas, definitely check it out. So I just got to the uh, med school, about to walk in to the uh, place where I'll be giving my talk. So here we go, about to get started here shortly. The uh, medical school is actually attached to the uh, hospital, but it's, uh, I've never heard it come up as a med school, so I'm a little lost, but I'm gonna find uh, the room here in a second. These are my two best friends. We actually all ended up here in San Antonio. Been friends since middle school. The guy, on the, uh, the guy on my left is a cardiothoracic anesthesiologist here in town, um, and the guy on my right is a, a personal trainer. So we all, we all did something in the medical field. Uh, Louisiana was a pretty dangerous place. It's actually the world's prison capital. Um, they say that one in uh, eight black males would go to prison at some time in their lifetime, and I, I kind of saw that as a uh, come to be true because I had family members that go to prison. My little brother went to uh, prison for armed robbery. My little sister was in prison. And ever since I was young, young, my mom has been in and out of prison and all, on and off drugs my whole life. Uh, she was actually shot and is uh, paralyzed from her waist down uh, due to her uh, drug addiction. But uh, Louisiana was a pretty dangerous place at that time, kind of growing up. Me and my best friend and also my two best friends, um, in high school, he actually came up to me one day and he said, hey, let's, let's go to college together and uh, let's become doctors ever since that medical acting program. And I was like, no, I don't want to go, go to college right away. I want to start making some money. Uh, so he actually went to college. He went to medical school right away. And then he went to residency and now he's done with all his training. I decided to go into the military. I decided to uh, do that to have a way for, to pay for college as well, as well as to gain some medical experience and also serve my country. But this picture just shows you that no matter what path you take, um, I wouldn't really worry about what the next person next to you is doing because if you want to be a doctor, there's so many different routes to that you can take. Like he went straight to college, medical school and residency, and I had to go in the military first and serve eight years, get out the military, apply to medical school, and then do all my training. So. This picture just, I just wanted to remind you guys that it doesn't really matter what path you take as long as you kind of reach that end goal, so. Sports medicine, uh, RG3, he tore his ACL a couple times, and also Paul, Paul George. Oh, had a uh, tibia fracture. Um, so when someone comes in with a tibia fracture, the tibia is the uh, fibula. Uh, we have a fracture here, what we do is put a metal rod inside their bone here 
and we use some, I use some clamps to uh, put the bone back in place and then I make an incision on the top portion of the knee here and then put this metal rod that goes all the way down their bone, it's titanium, and it stays in their bone until they have problems with it and most of the time we just leave it in it stays in basically. That's what Paul George has here. He still plays NBA ball. That's cool. This is a uh, RG3 and just needed a, a, a Redskins Cowboys game. So there is life outside of Redskins. Even though it's busy, you still have time to do things. You just have to um, find out what's most important for you. So you, you do have time to do things. I like to go hunting. I like to do things outside. I just came back from Thailand. I was there for a month. I was doing surgery there in Bangkok. Um, so and I went to Haiti twice this year to do surgery there. So there's lots of opportunities to do things outside of medicine and it doesn't comprise all of your time. It, it's busy, you have to study. I still have to study, I'm home and study. I'm actually about to go study right after this in the library. Because uh, every year in residency we have uh, practice exams for our board. So I take my real boards next year, but every year there's an eight hour test that tests you on know, orthopedic principles, surgeries, approaches, and you have to do well on that test or otherwise they'll hold you back a year. You may not advance to the next year. Each year we have to sign a contract to go to the next year. I just signed the last one. Hopefully it goes through. So, a knee arthroplasty. When, has anybody had a family member, grandma, grandpa, had a knee replacement? So we wear these um, spacesuits here. And it's basically to protect us from all the uh, blood and body fluids that go around in surgery. So this is actually a metal, uh, a total knee replacement. We cut the uh, bone of the femur here. The disease process has arthritis. And replace it with this metal prosthesis. And this is what it looks like on the x-ray after we're done. So, you know, I, I talked about coming from Shreveport, Louisiana was a pretty dangerous place to be. And a lot of family members went to prison, uh, my brother, sister, mom, friends. Uh, I think I got to this point right here. What do you guys think? Discipline. Persevere. Motivation. Yeah. You know what you want. Yep. Yeah. All those are great answers. Um, so I want to leave you guys with three kind of keys to yourself. Number one is to uh, kind of believe in yourself. They're going to, people along the way is going to tell you that you can't do it, you're not smart enough, uh, you should choose another career field. Advisors are going to tell you you should pick another major. But you know they, they tell me the same thing. And if I would have listened to those people, or if I would have gave up after applying those three years, I wouldn't be a doctor today. Uh, I wouldn't be a surgeon today. So. You have to believe in yourself. No one, else, no one else is going to believe in you more than you're going to believe in yourself. So even when people are telling you that you can't do it, hey, you, you, you don't, you, even if you don't think you can do it, just keep going, keep your head up, keep trying, and, and eventually it's going to pay off in the end. Number two is pr protect your craft. Uh, I hear people all the time that say they want to go into medicine or they want to do this or do that. Uh, but you have to put in the time, you got to put in the effort, you got to read, you got to read journals, you got to do things like this here, and that's as good as you guys are here this summer, instead of out partying or doing keg stands or something like that. Uh, but um, definitely protect your craft, put in the time, put in the effort. When I was in med school, my classmates read a chapter one time, I read that same chapter four times. Even now, if my classmates, my, if my colleagues who are in my residency here are doing I don't know, 500 questions for an exam, I'm doing 2,000 questions. So you got to put in the time, you got to put in the effort, um, you have to protect your craft. One plastic surgeon told me when I was working with him one day, he said, uh, you know, if you want to be a good surgeon, that's what he told me, protect your craft. So what he used to do is at red lights, he would tie sutures over his steering wheel. That's how he got really good with tying sutures. So I started doing that and I gave up after a couple of days. <laughs> <laughs> so that meant, that mentality or that way of thinking, that's what it's going to propel you forward. So and I always look at people who are very successful in medicine and like, man, what are they doing? So I can kind of get to that point also. So uh, definitely put in the time, put in, you have to sacrifice uh, over the years. Uh, you're going to miss a lot of parties and a lot of things with family and friends, but in the end it's going to pay off. And third is to uh, never give up. Um, one of my professors in medical school stated that failure is not in the falling down, it's in the failure to get back up and try again. So you, you're going to be faced with failures. Failure, failure is normal. Uh, I failed tests before, I failed struggled in classes, I hated organic, organic chemistry. Uh, I love the classes that I hate. Uh, physics, I like physics. I like general chemistry. 
Yeah, I hate those classes. And I, I struggled in organic chemistry, especially two. That's probably one of my hardest classes. Oh my god, two. So, um, none of that stuff you'll use. <laughs> <laughs> it's, a, uh, it's one of those things you just have to get through. So, but never give up. Um, if you want to be a doctor, you just have to keep telling yourself that you can do it and just keep keep going until you get to the end. So, but I want to leave you guys with this quote. Well, probably one of my favorite quotes. It says, uh, "Study while others are sleeping. Work while others are loafing." Prepare while others are playing a dream, while others are wishing. Uh, thank you guys for having me. more interesting as an applicant because everybody has a biology chemistry degree. Major in something that you you, you, you you like and then just do the prereqs for medical school. That's what I would recommend. Uh, last year you got accepted. Yeah. What kind of things are you trying to attack? Yeah. Yeah. That's a good question. I think you have to I've never been the best kind of standardized test taker. Um, and when I was in college, I didn't even know about the MCAT until after my end of my third year, close to my senior year. You can just tell how lost I was. Um, so my friend was actually, we were taking, uh, I think it was genetics, like downtown UTSA, and he was saying he was going on some interviews. I was like, you already applied to medical school? I was like, wow. So I didn't really take the MCAT until after I had graduated. But um, so if I would have known about the MCAT before, I'm pretty sure I would have paid attention in class and learned the information a lot better. <laughs> So that was the difference between that and med medical school. Medical school, I knew exactly step one was coming up after your second year. So I just made sure I worked really hard and I did really well on my step one. And that's most important to get into a residency is your step one score. So, but I think um, MCAT, trying to improve that and uh, learn to recommendation, get more clinical experience. Actually call them to schools and say, hey, what do you think I could do to improve my application? I was, really interested in your school, so that's what I call every school I apply to and say, hey, what can I do? What um, what made you choose residency here? Did you already say that? Yeah. Oh, that, I did. Okay. So I interviewed at uh, 15 programs. I went to Harvard, I went to uh, Baylor, Stanford, Cleveland Clinic, Northwestern, um, here, my home program in Georgetown. But I, I chose, this is my number one program, and the reason why I chose that is because of the autonomy that you get in the operating room mm -hmm. um, location. I wanted to come back to Texas, and I felt really comfortable with the residents here. So those are things you have to look at when you're choosing a residency program. Those things were important to me, and that's why I chose this program. What's kind of the process when you're looking at residency programs? Is it like kind of back in high school when you like go take tours, or is it just kind of like a lot of online research and stuff? Uh, it's word of mouth mostly. Word of mouth. It, 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 there's websites out there, but I apply to 81 programs. Yeah, during your fourth year, you uh, meet with the admin, the undergraduate medical education deans, and they help you write a residency letter for you um, based on your experiences, and you interview your during your fourth year at all the residency. You apply and you receive interview invites just like medical school. Yeah, and there's a match day, and everyone finds out where they match that. There's one for a fellowship. I just did fellowship interviews maybe six months ago. I went on maybe 10 interviews. Biggest interview tips? Interview tips? Just be yourself. Don't try to be somebody that you're not. Different specialties, various specialties are different. I know orthopedics, you know, it's orthopedics is a little bit more high strung. I had some interviews that, um, at one interview, I think it was at Wake Forest, as soon as I walked in the room, it was maybe five or six surgeons, and so they go back outside. You had five minutes to teach me something on the whiteboard, non-medical. No, no, um, no. At Stanford, they asked me to uh, pull out a piece of paper. Well, he just handed it to me. He said, "Draw me the proximal femur with all the muscle insertions, origin, blood supply, nerve supply." They draw it for me right now. Um, in Boston, I was asked to get my best Boston accent. <laughs> Some places will have you suture or check your hand-eye coordination, do different uh, techniques or different um, exercises, see how fast you can move with your hands. 
Um, so different things like that. Medical school is not that bad. Residency, they just try to mess with you, see how you respond. The person who asked me to draw all that stuff out, he didn't know it, probably didn't know it as a medical student. He just wanted to see how you respond. So you may get some questions. They know you're not going to know the answer, but if you sit there flustered, and, uh, just be very confident. Just be very confident. And even when I don't know the answer at work, I just be very confident and just look at me in the eye until they believe me. I guess I'm like a little, uh, and I guess this could be a question for Trey as well. So, like letters of recommendation, like what would stand out and what would be like? I think the more personal letters, like um, we have a person in orthopedics, Dr. Kate Wilkins. He's pretty worldwide known. Um, mm -hmm. He worked. He wrote me a letter of recommendation. People who know you really well, they have known you for a while. They can attest to your character, to your work habits. Um, those are the best letters, I think. If you have a letter from someone and they barely know you from class, one of your professors, that, per that, that professor probably has a letter hand that they just keep for everybody and just kind of changes it a little bit. So, but if you have someone who writes you a more personalized letter, those are the best letters. And in orthopedics, especially spine surgery, you want to get people who are well known in the field. So, in medicine, it's all about who you know as well. So, def definitely network, get to know people. That would help you. Everything, where did you find the time to write your book? That's a good question. Yeah, I wrote it my last year of med school. Fourth year is my, actually my favorite year of med school. I travel. Say, for instance, you want to go into uh, neurology, you can spend time in North Carolina, you can go to Texas, you can go to Oklahoma, and you do rotations of those hospitals that you're interested in. So, a lot of traveling, a lot of downtime in fourth year. I think medical school should be reduced to three years, I think, because the fourth year is almost a complete waste of time. <laughs> so, but that's when I wrote it for you. <laughs> uh, you know, a typical week for me in residency, it can vary. It gets busy, very busy at times, and it can be, you know, I work 40 hours a week. So every three days I'm on call, I work 30 hours every three days. So I'm at the hospital and I sleep there and operate all throughout the night or until the next day. So it's all about repetition. You review it over and over again. That's how you get it into your head. Do you think it's like more discipline and work ethic uh, that gets you where you want to go or like bigger natural like That's a great question. Absolutely. Skill. I'm not the smartest person. Uh, people who are in medicine are extremely smart. Uh, I don't think I'm that smart. I just work really hard. It just comes from my military uh, training. I'm very disciplined in my studies. I know exactly what I'm going to do um, each day and what, what I need to accomplish. Like right after this, I know exactly what I need to do before the night ends. So I think hard work beats talent any time. That's what they tell you. So you don't have to be smart to be a doctor. You got to work hard. Don't cover my Oh, I know. I see you. Everybody got in? Um, yeah. yeah. Okay, so JAMP is the Joint Admission Medical Program. Um, it is only allowed for people who are going straight from high school through college, through medical school. Um, college, uh, high school seniors, freshmen and sophomores are able to apply. They do have to take in chemistry um, and other science requirements. Um, th its mission is to help economically disadvantaged students. Um, it provides stipends and scholarships. Uh, they have two summer programs where they're able to shadow uh, different physicians in different areas of medicine, visit medical schools. Uh, they also uh, have help through their advisors, their JAMP faculty directors who help lead them um, and support them throughout their process. It's a pipeline program, so nine medical schools are uh, contracted with the JAMP admission medical program where they are automatically entered if they meet the MCAT eligibility requirements. Um, also, too, uh, they receive scholarships throughout medical school um, up until they graduate during their fourth year. Okay. Where can students learn more about this program? Okay. Great. Yeah. If they have any questions, they can go to www.texasjamp.org. All right. Awesome. Great.